For centuries, the romantic city of Heidelberg has inspired poets, painters, and lovers. British artist William Turner painted some of his greatest landscapes here. The view of the River Necker gave Mark Twain the spark he needed to write the final chapters of Huckleberry Finn. And the famous castle, one of Europe's most picturesque ruins, was transformed from a fortress to a palatial mansion for the love of a princess. Whether you have a day or a week, there's only one place to begin a tour of Heidelberg. I start at the castle, because from there you, you see everything. The courtyard and you see the uh, cellar where the wine was stored. And then I would uh, walk down and then, yeah, see the old town, see the alleys, see the two Gothic churches we have, and come to the old bridge and look to the castle, how it looks from down. The castle itself has a dramatic history. Its oldest parts date back to the 13th century, but most of it was destroyed in the Thirty Years' War. It's been in ruins ever since, but before that the hillside fort was transformed by a prince for his lady love. Before, in 12, 13, 14, 1500, it was a fortress. And then we had a prince and he married Elizabeth Stuart was the daughter of King James I from England. So Elizabeth didn't like to live in a fortress. And he loved her so much, he transformed the whole fortress into a castle. If you come in the summer, you may catch a performance of The Student Prince. This famous musical about a handsome prince longing to wed a common town girl was of course set in Heidelberg's famous castle. The next thing on most people's must-see list is Heidelberg's University. Some buildings are clearly modern, but this is the oldest university in Germany, built in 1386. And at that time, we had uh, four faculties. Uh, theology, of course, because the uh, university at that time were religious institutions. Medicine, law, and philosophy. And that time, 1386, we had about 500 students. And today, we have 30,000 students, and 17% come from all over the world, so quite international. But Heidelberg's university wasn't all highbrow. The walls of the student prison show that there were plenty of hijinks too. For hundreds of years, students were tossed in here for misdemeanors like drunkenness, womanizing, or according to one bit of graffiti, breaking lights. Five street lights I blew out, and then I became two days but rather I would sh should have blew out 25, then I could stay longer in here. <laughs> Three day stints eating only bread and water were considered a rite of passage for young men. They passed the time by graffitiing the walls and some left behind photos, a testament to their manhood and good humor. Apart from the historic sites, people come here to soak up German culture, old and new. This is a great place to while away the afternoon in a cafe or to take a serious pub crawl. In the summer, you might stumble on an outdoor beer garden with German street food and beer, or visit the dozens of local pubs like this one, where you can enjoy a meal and a pint of local brew. For a different perspective, cross the river to the Philosopher's Way. This hillside path has been well-worn by students and savants over the centuries. It offers great views over the river to the old town and castle. Today it's frequented by joggers and those looking for a respite from the tourist trail. And not far ahead is the same view that Mark Twain had when he wrote Huckleberry Finn. Some say the famous story of the river rafting youth actually got its name here in Germany. The name Heidelberg comes from the Heidelbeeren in German, Heidelbeeren, it's blueberry or huckleberry. And he knew that. And therefore, to say thank you, because he got the idea to finish this book here, he named his book Huckleberry Finn. There's one more reason to come to this side of the river. You'll get stunning views of summer firework displays. Like Heidelberg itself, an evening of fireworks by the River Necker is nothing short of magical. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.